All right, everybody, here we are once again, Franchise or Bust. I'm your host, Trevor. Got Katie with me as always. Hello. And today we are super excited because I'm, I'm positive it's a Franchise or Bust first to have someone joining us all the way from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. <laughs> Uh, a, a woman who is a, a truly uh, inspiring story in the franchise space uh, and in other endeavors as well that we may touch on. But uh, certainly with her development of Huntington Learning Centers, we are super pleased to be joined by the president and chairman of the brand, Ann Huntington. How are you? I'm well. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. And even though I'm in the Dakotas, Huntington <laughs> was founded in New Jersey. So we do have New Jersey roots. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. Um, well, you got some wide open spaces now, you know, out there totally. as opposed to the, the big city. But um, yes. but anyways, well, we certainly appreciate you having you on. We're excited to uh, learn more about uh, you, your story, as well as just, you know, Huntington brand and, and how that uh, has become, you know, really a, a, an industry leader for, you know, the um, helping of families, helping of children when it comes to their educational development and things like that, which is, you know, certainly a very exciting thing. and something that's uh, beneficial, not just from like a, you know, not just from like a business standpoint with the brand that you develop, but obviously with helping families and helping children, which is great. So if you wouldn't mind, we'd love to get to just know you a little better get to know the Huntington brand a little better. So if you could kind of let us know, um, how I got started, what your, you know, kind of goals were in the beginning and, and maybe some struggles and, and then how you kind of achieved some good success with your brand. Sure, of course. Well, you, you hit it uh, perfectly, Trevor, because not only are we doing really great work within franchising, we're making a tremendous positive impact for students. And we've been doing this for almost 50 years. Uh, so Huntington Learning Center was founded by Eileen and Ray Huntington, who are actually my parents. At work, I call them Eileen and Ray. And since day one, June 1977, the mission of Huntington has been to give every student the best education possible. That is our guiding light. That is our mission. And any franchisee, be it someone who's been in the system for 30 plus years or someone who's in the system for three days, everyone is mission focused, which is absolutely key. And so what we do is we, we change lives every day. Our vision statement is world-class student results and franchisee profitability. By putting the student first, you do well financially. So within franchising, and you all are no stranger to franchising, neither is your audience, you have to follow the system. So with, uh, within our system, we have systems and processes and proven results. And that's why folks look to us as potential franchisees and why customers look to us as their academic solution to help their children. So what we do, our, our key component is K through 12 tutoring and test prep. So what does that mean? And especially nowadays coming out of COVID with the learning losses and the tremendous impact in terms of remote learning, what does that landscape look like today? And what did it look like yesterday? Regardless of the situation, for almost 50 years, we've been getting results. And we've been getting results because it's not a Band-Aid approach. It's not a let's memorize for tomorrow's test and then forget it all. I mean, we all were students. I hope that didn't happen to us, but chances are we did have to go through the flashcards really fast. And kids nowadays don't know what flashcards are, but that's a whole other conversation. Uh, so what we do, instead of that Band-Aid approach, we get to the root of the problem. We're prescriptive and diagnostic, which means we start with an evaluation that pinpoints where the student is, and then we build customized learning plans to meet that student's need. So it could be a fifth grader who's actually on a third grade level. It could be a fifth grader on an eighth grade level. We can help students who are remedial or who are enriched or who are just as they are. We figure out exactly where they are and we map them to where the goals are for them to really have that motivation and that confidence. On the test prep side, namely it's SAT and ACT, though there are state specific exams and specialized exams. And we do that and we tailor those exams to meet what are the students' goals for college? What are the students' goals for that state exam? 
or whatever the exam is. So that that's what we do. We do it really well uh, in about 50 hours. So think about that. It's a little more than a work week. Our students will go up over 2.1 grade levels in reading and math. And then our average SAT increases 229 points and our average ACT increases 5.4 points, which has actually helped students receive a lot of scholarship uh, dollars, which we all know it's in the news in terms of uh, college debt and all that jazz, which is not good jazz. Um, uh, so our students on average will get about $71,000 worth of scholarship opportunities. So we're truly making a difference with a proven system that works and that is mission focused to really give every student that best education possible. That's what we do. Uh, that That's how we do it. We help families. We are a family business and we're rocking and rolling towards the future. That's outstanding. You know, one of the things that, um, that you mentioned that uh, I think we could kind of zero in on and, and, and discuss a little further is the kind of the, the following of a proven system that you know is replicable and one that um, most importantly, uh, you, you see tangible success from because you've taken the time to develop uh, the, you know, the, the system necessary and to make not just the uh, franchisee successful, which is kind of, you know, one of the obviously the major goals that you would have with a brand, um, but make the, the, the consumer successful, in this case, the student uh, successful and their family. So talk to me a little bit about um, sort of the importance of the systems that have been created and how the franchisees can really uh, take those systems and really thrive and, and you know, succeed inside of the brand. Because one thing that we see in franchising that can be challenging is when people do not really adopt and buy in powerfully uh, to the to the brand that they're a part of and to the system. So maybe just expand a little on, on the importance of that and, and why, you know, why those have been so effective. Sure. And that transcends past Huntington. Anyone who's looking at franchising, follow the system that you bought into, especially if there's a, a track record uh, and a proven system. And also look at the folks who are at the top of the revenue, the top of the rankings, listen to those folks. And when you are new, not only listen to the franchisor, but if the loudest person in the room is number, the last person on the ranking, chances are you might not wanna to listen to them or hear it, but then also hear what other folks do. Uh, so our system, there's a very clear methodology. We have a tremendous training department. A year in, year out, we're always ranked by Training Magazine as a top training department. And uh, it's, it's not rocket science. It's about really being present, following all of the steps that are necessary to ensure that we do right by the student. That is the key. Uh, so if, if if the program is not appropriate, the student will not see academic results, which means that family is not going to be happy, which means there will not be a referral. This is the marketing and you all are the marketing gurus. And then your brand rep reputation might not be right in that community. So flip the script, follow what we have to say, follow what the fellow franchisees are doing, and then you will see success. So what we do is we have a very thorough training process. And we learned a lot through COVID. Pre-COVID, we were all in person. Uh, now, post-COVID, our training is remote. We are seeing uh, the same uh, types of um, of gains in terms of the franchisees learning, and also it helps in terms of their p ls in terms of their pocketbook and flying to our main office, which is in New Jersey. Uh, so our training is extremely thorough. Uh, and then we have the support. So we have the franchise operations. We have our R&D team. We have our marketing team, our IT team. Everyone's integrated and many more teams. We have a coaching team, uh, lots of folks who are all working together to make sure that that franchisee is successful. And so with that, uh, that franchisee will be successful. 
We've also learned that over the years, it's important to have forums uh, where franchisees can speak and where franchisors can speak in, con in constructive ways to ensure that uh, we're doing right by the system. So we have a franchise advisory council. We have a national advertising fund and a board uh, that includes five franchisee, five franchisors. We have a tutoring council, a test prep council, and many more that are dedicated to different business lines. And then of course, the overall franchise, such as the Franchise Advisory Council. So by having those forums, we can ensure that we're doing right by the system. By having the thorough training department, we can ensure that the folks who are coming into the system know what they're doing. You do not need to have an education background in order to be successful. We help you figure out who do you need to hire, what are the resources you need, what makes sense. And another lesson learned during COVID is something that we're really proud of in terms of um, helping franchisees enroll students. So say that you buy a, a, a center that's already up and running. In our case, you know, we're almost 50 years, we have a lot of centers. So folks are retiring, they're thinking of succession planning, they're ready for their next chapter, whatever the case may be. So you as a new franchisee jump on a moving train. So how do you then gather everything, but also make sure you take care of your family. So we created something and also for new folks, so it's not just transfers so for new franchisees. This is also extremely beneficial. We created something called virtual conferencing where we at the franchisor level will actually help you enroll your customer, your, your families. And this helps, especially this day and age, and this also transcends all industries within franchising and the greater workforce, uh, it, it's hard to retain folks. So if you have someone who leaves you, who's your center director, uh, and it's a surprise, or goes out on maternity leave, or whatever the case may be, there's a, a resource for that franchisee so that they make they know that their their customers are being taken care of. So we're always iterating to see what is right for our franchisees to make sure that they're successful. With the experience that you know we've had over the years with a variety of brands and in speaking with people in the franchise community, you are really describing some some key fundamentals to just success. And one of those that you're that you just you know alluded to and expanded upon there was the support that's in place for the franchisees themselves. So oftentimes, uh, you know, people who buy into a franchise system or become a part of a brand think, okay, well, I am now my own business. I'm a business owner and I have to go out and, you know, kind of make sure that everything's going to succeed the way I want it to. And to a certain extent, obviously that that is a component and they do have to uh, take on the responsibility and do the things that are necessary. But as you were mentioning, if they kind of have that ethic already, but and then combine that ethic with a support system from the franchisor, that's truly when you get um, when you get a, a, a brand that, you know, has the capability of really growing and doing well and satisfying their customer base referrals, having people enjoy their experience. That's not just franchising, that's all businesses um, in order to succeed. So you're, you're really, uh, you know, kind of making sure that that, that connection between franchise or franchisee is super important. And then obviously the end customer feeling that that support as well is what's going to drive. If you would talk a little bit about, because so um, if I were to go and buy several uh, Taco Bells or if I was going to buy some Chick-fil-A's or whatever it may be, I don't necessarily have to have a passion for burritos. Um, it's certainly not as big of a passion as Katie does for, you know, right. Burritos. <laughs> That's true. But I don't have to have like this, you know, like, wow, I just, I love, you know, I, I love this product that I have. I would imagine with, when you're working with families, you're working with children, it, is it important to at least have some kind of uh, you're coming to the, you know, coming to the table, if you will, with some type of goal and, and passion toward like helping children and, and how important is that for your franchisees? Great. Well, first off, I too like burritos and tacos. So there you have it. Um, I mean, I, that's, it, that's, it, would be, it, it would make owning those easier. That's for sure. <laughs> for sure. Um, in terms of 
the type of franchisee we look for. Of course, um, you never truly know until until they they start their business, right? Um, that's just human nature. But we we've been doing this for a while. There are characteristics. One of them, as you said, Trevor, you do have to like kids. You know, mm -hmm. if you if you don't like kids um, and you don't want to see their growth, we're probably not the right fit for you. Now, if you're an absentee owner and your partner is a former educator or you're a family and you're doing it as a team, okay, maybe we can figure out that story. But the prerequisite, in addition to all the financials and background checks, et cetera, et cetera, um, is really to want to make a difference in your community and help students learn. Uh, we see some great franchisees who are former families uh, who then have seen the results with their children, saw how that franchise operated and say, hey, this is not only benefiting my children, it's actually a good business proposition. So many of our franchisees are former families uh, or families who have a reason to get into education. So it could be someone who has a student with learning difficulties, or it could be uh, someone who understands supplemental education, tutoring, test prep. Maybe they went to a competitor. Uh, and then when they were doing their due diligence within franchising said, hmm, I wish I had brought my student to Huntington. I'm going to buy a Huntington. That happens too. It just actually happened a couple weeks ago uh, where they were talking about a competitor and said, but then I saw this and I was like, wow, I wish that there was one in my community. And now they're going to open one in their community. So those are a couple different ways. But the main, the main point is you want to do right by the students. You want to also do well financially. Uh, and so we're the best of both worlds. Yeah, your, your model on the economic side, um, what are some of the things that really, uh, you know, kind of separate you all from some of your competition, you know, in the space? I mean, I know uh, unit economics is a boring subject for someone who's not in franchising, but for, for those of us who are or, and, and know about that a little bit, uh, how do you all facilitate, you know, that, so the primary mission, satisfy the consumer, help the children, you know, secondary, let's make sure the franchisees are set up for success. So the, the brand overall succeeds. So, um, yeah, maybe just break that down a little bit for us about how, you know, franchisees are able to really, really uh, gain good value from the investment they're making. Great question. And so the beauty of franchising, everything's disclosed in the franchise disclosure document. So item 19, be it a prospect or a franchise or anyone in the industry, is a great tool to figure out system averages. So what we've done, and we've been doing it for years, we stack ourselves up against our competitor. And so our latest is that our, our average revenue is about 500,000, uh, which is 32 percent higher than our closest competitor. We're really proud of those results. And again, it's not rocket science. It's our franchisees, they care, there's concern, and they follow the system and the system works. And we share those results, which we're super proud of. Uh, and in terms of unit economics, that is a, it's an important topic. And as you said, some folks might say, okay, what are they talking about? But it is key to success. And so we are a almost 50 year company. So we started with carbon paper and now, now we are, um, of course, Chromebooks and in the cloud and all that jazz. Uh, so we implement third party tools to help us understand uh, where where the franchisees are. Uh, last year, we rolled out something called Profit Keeper, which a, a lot of different franchisors use to really help in terms of what are the expenses of the franchisee and how can we, at the franchisor level, help them optimize? What should your staffing be in terms of percentage? What does that P&L look like? What is your budget? If you wanna, we have four tiers. Um, tier one being the highest, tier four being the lowest. If you want to be move up, okay, how many more students do you need? Uh, what is the length of stay of the programs? And all of that really is for what is right for the student. So, right, if a student leaves the program halfway through, they haven't gotten the gains that they need. So how do you ensure that those students stay? Uh, and of course, that's the efficacy of the program, but it's also good business practice. 
And so our operations team is looking at all the numbers and meeting with the franchisees, conducting local area meetings, conducting meetings via, via Zoom to really ensure that there's a focus on those KPIs to move the needle. And in addition, we have high achiever trainings. And even if folks have been in the system, the top performers are always active. They're always involved. They always show up. They participate. And then there's also a need to really help the lower level folks move up. You know, we don't want to just ignore folks because that's not healthy, nor is it right, because everyone has an opportunity to reach their potential. So we've created customized training, such as Operation Success, where it's invitation uh, only. They come on in. They have to sign up for certain programs that the franchisor has so that we know that they're accountable for their operations and really moving that needle. And we see tremendous success within that. So by creating customized operational trainings, we're really seeing success, which helps with the unit economics overall. The kind of franchisor uh, process that you're describing is so, so key to, you know, to making sure that franchisees are, like you said, accountable, uh, accountable to, you know, their success and, and also accountable to the brand and, and what they're putting out there so that your brand reputation, which is so important, uh, maintains, which is fundamental, uh, you know, for any brand to succeed. That's fantastic. Um, we'll talk to us just a little bit briefly then about the future. So we've been around for 50 years. So we know that we know we're, uh, it's impossible to say anything, but it's been a phenomenal success. Um, so where does uh, where is the next, you know, five to 10 or so years take the brand? Wow, almost 50 years. So we're 46 years young, uh, though we're, we're almost 50. Uh, so three, five years, um, four years will be the 50, which will be fabulous. Uh, right now, we're going through a whole digital transformation, and we've been going through transformation over the years. Of course, I shared that we started with carbon paper. Uh, now our students are on Chromebooks. The hot topic right now is AI, and AI in all fields. So, you know, our back office, franchising, there's a lot of opportunity there, but also in terms of education, AI has a, a true place. And so in the next three to five years, we see the e-curricula and our learning systems uh, incorporating a lot of machine learning and AI um, components. That said, we do believe in pen and paper, and some of our curricula pieces do have copyrights that probably predate some of us on this call, but they work. Uh, so when you're dealing with children and you're dealing with their education journey, they're not guinea pigs. We want to make sure that they are getting what they need at the right time. So in the future, AI has a, has a, a place and machine learning has a place within Huntington. We believe in franchising. We've been franchising for quite a lot while. There's a, a lot of opportunity within the United States for more Huntingtons. We have a little shy of 300. This market uh, in terms of the U.S. can fit about a thousand. So we're we're on our growth trajectory. So three to five years, there will be more Huntingtons all over. Uh, and in addition to that, it's really how do you do the brick and mortar, the in-person and online? There's so much opportunity in terms of helping more students online. And of course, with COVID, we all had to pivot really quick. We know that story um, and uh, we did that. And we, we get great gains with our online students, our in-person students, and most uh, the most gains actually with hybrid students, which we define as students who attend in-person and online. Uh, so those are three components uh, in terms of AI, franchise growth and online that will uh, be continuing to uh, push forward in the next few years. In terms of management structure, uh, the co-founders are still involved. They are quintessential co-founders. Some people love that. Some people don't like that, where they know everything and, and want to be involved in anything and everything because this is their, their first baby, right? So they just want to just make sure. So they're, they're happy as clams, uh, though in the next three to five years, they'll move up, not out, meaning they'll be more on that board level, strategic level than the day to day. So it's 
grooming that next gen um, C-suite team and making sure we have the right people in the right position. So all really good and really exciting. It's it's incredible to hear the success of the brand and the, the plans for the future and what you have going on. Um, we really appreciate all the insights and the things that we've been able to learn about Huntington and, and reinforcing uh, reinforcing the um, what what truly does make a franchise brand successful, the dynamics between the franchise or the franchisee, and then ultimately the most important part of any business, and that's how you relate to uh, your customer, and in this case, to your students and their success. So I uh, really enjoyed learning about all those things. And then, you know, I guess kind of lastly, do you have any, uh, for those of you listening, Anne is also a movie producer. She does uh, philanthropy with her with art buying and things like that. What's what's on the horizon there? We don't have to get too down the the, the path there since it's a bit of a different subject. But I, I find it interesting. I'm I'm curious where uh, do we have any new? Uh, do you want to put Katie in one of your documentaries and maybe there you go? You know, yeah, she's an actress. I mean, it's it's true. Okay. Well, the documentaries are, if you have an art passion, you never know. Uh, there's, there's always great ideas out there. It's just a question of time and, and uh, resources. Right now, I'm really focused on Huntington. And, and uh, when, I, when I see certain works, acquiring them. Uh, and then I'm active in a few nonprofits and, uh, and museums. Uh, I'm relatively new to South Dakota, so I'm getting involved more in this art scene, which is quite interesting uh, and, and different from the New York scene. Uh, so also just making sure that in my local area, I'm seeing what's going on and getting involved. So TVD on that, that will have to be another podcast. No worries. Um, well, very cool. And again, the insights on the brand and the things that you all are doing have been fantastic. We really appreciate it. We're excited to see the growth in the future, and we'd love to have you back on in a year or so and talk about how uh, AI and the digital component and the way that your leadership structure continues to evolve is impacting the brand and any of the, the new things that have been going on. Thank you so much. All right. Fantastic. All right, everybody. That concludes today's episode of Franchise or Bust. We appreciate you turning in. Turning in? Did they turn in or did they tune in? I think they tuned in. They didn't turn All in. All of the so above. They're yeah. Turning in now. They're saying, wow, this is great. I'm, now I'm going to turn in for a little nap. <laughs> um, but thank you all so much for listening. We appreciate it. And we'll talk to you on the next Franchise or Bust. Bye.